Hello, today is Sunday, the 6th of April, 2008, and I uh, had some major computer issues on Friday afternoon. So let's take a look at what the markets did on Friday and uh, where they might be headed for the coming week. The S&P 500 finished on Friday with a loss of 15 cents, or 0.11%. You can see here that uh, you know we remain above this rising 50-day moving average. We've got that 10-day moving average coming up through the 50, and the 20-day moving average is starting to rise as well. This all occurs within the context of a much bigger uh, downtrend on the weekly time frame, which gives us reason to still be uh, pretty suspicious overall. But uh, you know, trust the rallies while they're there for the short term. Uh, this week coming forward, we've got uh, uh, earnings really starting to be released at a much more rapid pace. So you want to be very aware of uh, the companies that you're in and when they're due to report because, uh, you know, this this could be a very volatile earnings report, um, you know, based on uh, any fallout from the subprime and how it hits uh, individual uh, companies. So we've got the S&P 500 below key levels of support from last year. And until it can really clear that 140 level, uh, then we want to continue to be suspicious of, of rallies. Not necessarily suspicious, but just be aware that uh, you know the, these this market is going to need more time to correct uh, through through uh, through time rather than the price that we've already seen it correct by. So I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a test of that 50-day moving average again somewhere over the next uh, week or two, or at least to come down towards that 135 level. And if, again, if we take a look at the uh, VWAP since the January lows, that's rising. It's about 133.70 or so, and since the beginning of the year, we've got it right around 135. So I think 135 is going to continue to be important going forward. Friday's action, what we saw was that uh, the market did make it above some resistance that we've been seeing here set up recently, uh, but it failed to hold above that level. So that gives us reason to be concerned here towards the beginning of the week that maybe these markets are going to need to correct a little bit further. Uh, you know, from these failed moves, often come fast moves. There's nothing indicating that a more serious sell-off will come. But with this pattern of higher lows, if this gets uh, uh, violated, particularly below 136 and then the uh, 135, 60 or so, then you want to be a little bit more aware that, uh, in, in, in particular this level, because it was this prior resistance, which was tested uh, last week as support in here. So we want to just be aware that the markets, you know, last week from Tuesday through Friday, Friday it extended, ex expended a lot of up energy on the upside in here. It broke out past this resistance, but failed to hold. So that gives us reason for concern. Uh, just over the next couple of days that, uh, you know, it's going to need to stabilize and maybe uh, just be more of a stock-by-stock -stock basis um, that, you know, going forward that, uh, you know, the, these overall large ind indexes need some time probably to heal in here. So uh, we continue to be in an environment where there's some really good uh, movement in the individual stocks, and uh, that's really where you want to focus your energy anyways. Let's take a look at the semiconductors. I'd shown these on uh, last Thursday because they had broken past a uh, multi-month level of resistance here at about $30.20. You can see the market is holding above that level, so that's good to see. We've got a rising 10, 20, and 50-day moving average, all again with the con within the context uh, of this larger term decline. So uh, we still have larger issues that need to be dealt with, but certainly the shorter term picture based on the daily time frame has shown tremendous improvement. And when we look at a uh, hourly time frame in here, again, this $30, the $30.20 level, it's going to be important for this market to hold above there on a closing basis, I think. Um, because that, you know, we've got uh, this prior resistance, which should now act as support. It did here on, uh, on, on Friday. You saw that it was tested down near there, and the market bounced uh, from that level. So that's important to see that the market is stair-stepping higher, um, and you want to give the, this market the benefit of the doubt here on the daily time frame and think that maybe uh, it can continue to rally up towards maybe that 32 level. Again, it's going to really depend a lot this week going forward on earnings. The uh, Russell 2000, uh, again, the key level in here obviously is 73. This market has experienced uh, several weeks of good upside within the context of this larger downtrend. So we're getting you know, a little bit extended here in price. Uh, we've got this 50-day uh, moving average is starting to advance, so that's a good sign that the buyers are gaining control. Volume remains uh, uh, very light in here relative to this 
a uh, huge volume on the downside. And that was just, you know, pretty much washout volume. Now we're returning maybe to more normalized trading, but it's still just a little bit lighter than what I'd like to see for a rally to sustain itself. Ideally, it would be nice to see actually this market pull back a little bit and consolidate these gains further and create a, a firm level for it to rally from. The, uh, the key level for the uh, intermediate term in here is at about $70.30, let's call this. Uh, holding above there will be important going forward. We did see the same type of breakout here uh, Friday, and then the market failed to hold on to that. We also saw that the volume started to increase as the market came down a little bit. So just a little bit of reason to think that this market might need a little bit further consolidation in, in this level. And that would be a good thing. The stronger foundation we can build in here, then perhaps this market can break past the 73 level once it gets through earnings, and this market can turn itself around. We'll see. But again, just uh, remain aware that the larger term uh, weekly time frame still gives us reason for concern. So it's not a rush out and buy everything, but as these companies start to report earnings and uh, that news gets absorbed, uh, you know, if your stock hold, holds on to uh, gains that it's seen, then perhaps we're going to see uh, uh, further, you know, further upside. The, uh, the financials, uh, they remain underneath this trend line. And uh, you can see that it's just battling, going sideways here with that 50-day moving average. It's nice to see that the market rallied up to that and above that 50-day moving average on so a nice increase in volume. And now it's consolidating these gains in lighter volume. That indicates to me that there's not a rush to the exits here um, and that, uh, you know, we've seen one low volume uh, consolidation after it touched upon that 50-day moving average. The 50-day moving average is starting to flatten out as well. That's an encouraging sign. The bigger levels uh, that this market will have to clear, I think, are, first of all, that downtrend line, obviously. And again, breaking a downtrend line doesn't mean the market will reverse. It means the rate of descent has slowed. Uh, but if it can get back above this 2770, 2780 level, then I think we're starting to see some real progress being made in this group and and we could start to look again seriously at this inverted head and shoulders pattern that i had been outlining last week and so basically i still think that about 2740 or so 2745 getting above these two little peaks right here that puts the buyers in control uh intermediate term and i think we could see a nice little short squeeze rally develop if it's to uh you know take just a very conservative measurement and call this 23 up to 27, that'd be four points, that would give us a price target objective near about $31 a share. And again, that's where we find the t declining 200-day moving average. I wouldn't use that as a price objective, but just so an idea to say here's where this market has the potential to really get moving. So again, the, uh, the key level of support for this market is at about $26, $26.10. If the market can hold above that and then build a higher high, then we might uh, see some, some further upside here in this market. Let's take a look finally at the NASDAQ 100. Uh, Friday afternoon, I, you know, before my computer went down, I uh, pointed to the symmetry of this market, saying that basically the height of this of these two peaks is, is almost uh, identical in here. And a lot of times that's the way the market plays out. It makes these symmetrical moves in terms of point. And, and then, uh, then we see further consolidation. So what we saw in here is that the widely watched level, this $46 level here that we've been talking about here the last week and a half, was violated on the upside. The market broke above that level on Friday but failed to hold on. Now, again, it's not always the breaking of a level of resistance that matters most, but what's the subsequent action? Can the buyers maintain their, uh, their control of, of the trend in here uh, when it breaks above that level? So when we look at this hourly time frame, again, here's that $46 level clearly broken Friday afternoon, but the market failed to hold on to, uh, to those gains. You can see that that $46 level uh, was you know fought at here a little bit. The buyers took control. It rallied nicely, but then it failed to hold and close below the daily VWAP. So the fact that the market broke past the key level of resistance and was unable to hold tells us we have to be careful. It doesn't tell us that the market will decline. It doesn't tell us more than you want to be very careful. This market has ex expended quite a bit of energy on the upside last week. It met that symmetrical price objective that I pointed out on that chart on, on the blog Friday. And now we're in an area where 
this failed breakout may lead to some further consolidation. If that's the case, you know, keep an eye on these levels. I, th I think that the 10-day moving average, now that that's rising, may begin to show some uh, uh, some buyers found in that area. So we've got, uh, again, we've got earnings due out this week for a lot of companies, and they're going to be coming out at an increased uh, rate. So just continue to be careful and take it more on a stock-by-stock -stock basis.